Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to see about how to create Azure Databricks and we'll also discuss about the different versions of Databricks available in Azure. So in the last video, we have seen the complete introduction of Azure Databricks in detail. So if you haven't watched that video, I would highly recommend to watch it. Okay, so now let's get started. So firstly, as you can see here, I am inside the resource group, which is RG Mr. K Azure Tutorials. This is the resource group that we used for all the Azure Data Factory tutorials. I'm going to use the same resource group for Databricks as well. Okay, so now let's click on this new button inside the resource group. After clicking that, it will take us to the Azure Marketplace. Here in the search box, let's type Azure Databricks and click on it. After clicking that, you can see Azure Databricks, which is the first one appeared here. So this is the resource that we need to create. As you can see here, this is the official one provided by Microsoft. So let's click on this. And here you have an option called Create. Let's click on this button to create Azure Databricks. So firstly, we are in the Basic tab, where we need to provide few details in here. The first option is the Subscription. So I have just one subscription, which is Azure Subscription 1. So let's choose this. After selecting that, the next option is the resource group. This is to specify in which resource group we are going to create this Databricks resource. So by default, the RG Mr. KSU Tutorials resource group has been selected since we started to create this inside that resource group. So if you need to use any other resource group, then you can use this dropdown to select it. Okay, so after choosing the resource group, the next option is the workspace name. This is the actual Databricks workspace name. So let's give a name called DBW Test Mr. K. As you can see here, there is a tick mark over here, which means that this name is accepted to be used. The next one is the region. So we have different locations available where you can create this Databricks resource. So it is always recommended to create any Azure resource which is closest to your region. So I'm going to choose Australia East, which is the closest one from a location. After that, we have pricing tier option. So this is an important setting which needs to be properly configured while creating this resource based on your requirements. There are three options available here. The first one is standard, and then we have premium. And also we have a trial option to try premium version for 14 days, which is completely free. So in order to decide between the standard and the premium tier, we need to know the differences between them. So let's see that now. So the first and the foremost important difference between the standard and the premium tier is role-based access. So what I mean by role-based access is, say for example, if you are creating a Databricks resource using the standard tier. So if any person has access to this Databricks workspace, then that person should be having access to all the notebooks, clusters, and data, which is inside the Databricks workspace as well. You cannot restrict the access based on the role assignments. Say for example, you cannot do something like only the certain number of people can access these notebooks or only these people can access these cluster and other restriction. Whereas if you create the Databricks workspace using the premium tier, then we can use the role-based access to control the level of access one should have inside the workspace. So this option is really an important one and currently only premium tires support this. So this is one of the main differences between standard and the premium tire. The next important difference between these two tires is an option to use credential pass through in the cluster. Say for example, if you're creating a cluster in Databricks, there will be an option called credential pass through. We can enable this option only if you're using the Databricks premium tire and you cannot use this option when you're using standard tire. So what is meant by credential pass through is, this is something related to the connectivity between the Azure Data Bricks and the Azure Data Lake. In other ways, we can say that this is a configuration which is related to how does the Databricks is going to interact with Azure Data Lake. Say for example, if a user is having required access to view the Azure Data Lake, using the same access, the Databricks can connect with Azure Data Lake to interact with it. This is called credential pass through. So if the user does not have access to the Azure Data Lake, then the same user cannot use Azure Databricks to access the Data Lake. This is really an important feature because consider there is no credential pass-through enabled on the Databricks cluster. Then 
even the user who does not have access to the data lake can access all the data using the Databricks instead, which is kind of breaching the security. Therefore, to restrict this, we need to enable this credential pass-through option. When this is enabled, only the user who has access to the data lake can access the data in the data lake using Databricks. So this credential pass-through is only available in the premium tier and not in the standard tier. So if you need to have this credential pass-through option, we need to configure a premium tier workspace. Otherwise, we need to use other features like data lake mounting using the standard tier. The next difference is the Delta Live Tables. The Delta Live Tables is the newly introduced feature in Azure Databricks, which is like creating a complete ETL pipelines using the Databricks itself. To use this feature, we need to have a premium Databricks workspace. The next one is the advanced security feature like virtual network, private network, etc. In Azure Databricks, all the network related configuration can be only done using the premium workspace. This kind of virtual private network is mainly used to configure like if the Databricks workspace should be only be accessed via a certain private network, then we can use this option to configure it which thereby needs the premium workspace. So these are some of the main difference between the premium and the standard workspace. Still, there are some more differences between them. Like in terms of cost, the premium would be expensive compared to the standard tire, but the performance in premium would be much better. Also, you'll get more support options available from Microsoft if you're using premium workspace compared to using standard workspace. So I'm going to choose the premium tire for our tutorials. The reason being to explore more concepts like credential pass-through, Delta Live Tables, and other features supported in the premium tier, which will help you to understand different concepts in Azure Databricks. So now we have given all the required details in the Basics tab. Let's click on the next button, which is Networking. In the Networking tab, the first option that we have is No Public IP option. As you can see here, the default option is selected as No. So if we create the Databricks using the same default option, then what will happen is the Databricks workspace will be created with a public IP associated with it. You can use this IP for several instances. Say for example, if the created Databricks needs to access any kind of data source, then you can whitelist this public IP in the data source so that the Databricks can connect with the data source without any issues. So if you select the yes option here, then the Databricks will not use a public IP and it will use a private IP, which will be more secure than this, but it requires some additional network configurations to be done. In this demo, I'm going to go with the default option, which is no. In this Databricks playlist, I will be more likely covering concepts related to the different data engineering functionalities that we could do with the Databricks and will not be much concentrating about the network or the security elements. And the next option is to specify if we need to deploy this Databricks in a private virtual network or not. Again, this is also related to the networking stuff. So I'll go with the default option, which is no. So if you have a virtual private network and you would like to deploy the Databricks only in that network, then you can choose the option yes and select the virtual network to configure this. I'm not going to use this option now, so I'll go with no. The next tab is the encryption. So in terms of encryption, the Azure Databricks itself will do all kinds of required encryption when we are dealing with any data inside the workspace or when we are moving data from one place to another using Databricks. So it uses some default keys to perform those encryption. But if you want to perform certain kinds of encryption with your own keys, rather than the default one, then you can make use of this tab to specify the private key for encryption. As you can see here, there is an option called use your own keys. So you can enable this option and supply the key to perform the encryption. I'm not going to perform any kinds of advanced security related encryption as discussed before. So I'm just happy for the Databricks to handle all the encryption using the default keys since it is already a more secure way of handling the data in Databricks. So now I'll go to the next option, which is tags. Tags are mainly used to specify some key value details, which can be used to easily identify the resources. I'm going to give a tag called created by, and I'll put the value called Mr. K. In this way, we can easily identify who has created this resource. 
After specifying the tags, I think we have pretty much filled in all the details required to create Azure Databricks. So let's click on this review and create button over here. As you can see here, the validation is successful now. You can also verify all the details that you have given in this page. So once you are happy, click on this create button. So as you can see here, the Databricks is getting deployed. So let's wait for it to complete. Okay, cool. As you can see here, the deployment is completed now. So let's click on this go to resource button to open Azure Databricks. So this is the Azure Databricks and here you can see all the information like the pricing trier, tags and other stuff. So now let's click on this launch workspace to open the Azure Databricks workspace. This will take us to your new page, which is completely a new UI. So similar to how we have a separate workspace for Azure Data Factory, we have a separate UI for Databricks as well. We'll be using this workspace to do all kinds of data transformation and other stuff that we could do with Azure Databricks. So this is how the Azure Databricks workspace looks like. There are different kinds of options here to discuss. We can explore all of these options in the next video where I'll give you a complete tour of this workspace. So that's it for today. I think now you have a clear understanding of how to create Azure Databricks. Please like, share and subscribe if you find this video useful and see you in another great video. Until then, cheers. Bye.